Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be pulling Ethernet out to the detached garage and setting up a wireless access point so I have better connectivity out there when I'm working out in the shop. And firstly here, I'm also installing a 20 amp outlet so that I can run my welder on whenever I feel like giving metal the aesthetic of having him right. And the reason I'm making these videos is because I have a good amount of experience running low voltage wiring and I want to be able to impart any of that knowledge if it ends up being helpful. And if you're a beginner then it may just be helpful to see what the process looks like. I also put together a list of tools on my website so check the description for a link to that article. And as always if you have any questions I'm almost always available in Telegram or just leave a comment down below. Disclaimer, I am not an electrician. However, from the time I was 14 to my mid-20s, I remodeled houses and I've seen a lot of electrical work done. There really isn't that much to installing an outlet or a lighting fixture, but there are some fundamental principles that you need to understand before you do your own electrical work. For instance, I'm putting in a 20 amp circuit and that requires a 12 gauge wire. Now if I were to put in a 14 gauge wire behind this 20 amp circuit, that wire can overheat and burn up and even burn down the garage. So you want to have an understanding of amperages and how different circuits are rated. I believe anybody can do this. You have the time and the desire, especially with all the resources we have available to us today. So don't be afraid to go ahead and run your own wiring. But if you burn down your house or your garage, please don't come back here to blame me. Here I'm digging down next to the conduit because I wanted to see if the conduit is buried all the way across the lawn or if they just did a direct bury on the wire across the lawn. I see here there is a 90 degree elbow at the bottom of the conduit which tells me that the conduit is buried all the way across the lawn. Alternatively I would have seen uh, just the wire coming directly out of the bottom of the conduit and that being buried across the lawn. So this makes it a little bit easier as I will be able to pull the new ethernet through this existing conduit instead of having to bury the ethernet line. Here I'm bringing out the line to pull and I'm using CAT5E. I know a lot of people get hung up over having CAT6 or CAT7 these days. If your runs are under 150 feet, you're basically just wasting your money because CAT5E is more than capable of doing 10 gigabit per second up to 150 feet. And that's basically future-proofed for my lifetime 
it's highly unlikely I will ever see anything in excess of 10 gigabit no, per second. No. When I pull this line through, there is a chance that as I'm pulling this line, it's going to wear through the power line. So one thing I wanted to point out here is when you're pulling a line through a conduit with an existing wire, you can generate enough friction and wear through and damage the wire that's already in there. To prevent that, you would use a cable lubricant. And I didn't do that in this video, but I highly recommend that any type of situation you're pulling wire like this, you use a cable lubricant. I'm going to go in the basement and pull it over to my network box. Alright, now I already did this, but if you want to, I pulled it in from over there. That's where we last saw the, the entry point of the basement. And I made sure to bring this, walk it along. Make sure that I'm going over everything, under everything, to get it all the way back to the uh, network box here. All right. You want to make sure you got a good route, and then maybe you can zip it down. Wi-Fi is great out there now, except coming back down here, if we take a look at the switch, uh, we're going to see we have an orange light on the Ethernet link connection. So what that means is this line is only connected, that Wi-Fi access point is only connected at 100 megabit instead of gigabit. So I changed ports on the patch panel, I replaced the jumper between the panel and the switch, I replaced all the RJ45 ends, and still could not get a gigabit link, so I had to re-pull the wire. And with the new line in place, I got the gigabit link that I was looking for. And checking the footage marks on the line, you can see I got 842 on one end. And let's see here, 758 on the other end. So the total run of this line is only 84 feet. Final step, I'm hooking up my laptop to check the bandwidth of this line that I just ran. Now, in order to do that, you use a tool called iPerf iPerf is specifically meant for checking bandwidth between two different devices. So I'm going to SSH into the server that's sitting down in the network cabinet, setting that up with an iPerf-S to be ran as the listener for the connection. I'm going to run from my laptop with an iPerf-C and connect to that listener. It's going to run a bandwidth test, and you're going to see it takes a little time, but I get back here. 935 megabit per second, which is as good as you can expect on a gigabit link. So I'm more than happy with that. If I ever want to upgrade my hardware, like my patch panel or my switch to 2.5 gigabit or 10 gigabit, I can expect this line to be able to handle it. The final, final step is to set up the SSID and password on this new access point. And because I'm using uh, TP-Link EAP access points and I'm self-hosting the Omada controller it's as easy as just going into the Omada controller clicking the adopt button and that automatically configures the access point with my SSID password and any other rules that I have set up for my network so that does it for this video hopefully you learned something if you have any advice or comments for me Leave them down below or hit me up on Telegram. Other than that, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.